Hello and welcome. I'm the Rambling Director, and today we're going to be talking about another version of A Christmas Carol. Sorry if I sound a little stuffed up. I know I've been sick for like the last year, so you guys are probably just getting used to it. Uh, but for some reason, I've just been really sick again the last like three weeks and I just can't seem to get past it so anyway today we are talking about the Stuart Brennan version of A Christmas Carol one that I just watched for the first time last night Stuart Brennan if you don't know is an English actor I believe he was the youngest ever recipient of a Best Actor BAFTA, uh, from what I've read. I, I could be wrong about that, but that, that's what I've read. Uh, big, big uh, guy in terms of like get, trying to get independent films uh, more acceptance. Apparently he's founded or helped found a couple of independent film competitions, festivals, and uh, I, I think that's just really cool. And this is an indie film. It does look like an indie film as well, but I want to I want to say some really good stuff about it before we get into criticisms of, of which I have a few. Now the film only holds I'm, I'm I'm looking for reference. Uh, the film only holds a 4.1 out of 10 on the IMDb rating score. I don't think that's entirely fair. I think they are probably judging this in the way they would judge like a Hollywood production. And I just don't think that's a fair comparison because this is an indie film. It was clearly made on a low budget. Uh, I mean, they had a budget, clearly, but it was obviously wasn't big. And yet they did have some, some recognizable names attached to it. Again, Stuart Brennan himself was involved. Uh, it was directed by uh, David Izzat. Isat, I don't know how you pronounce it. You're going to make fun of me in the comments anyway, no matter how I pronounce it. Uh, who is uh, not somebody uh, I've seen much of his work, but he does have a, you know, he's not an amateur. He's got some some people, you know, some, some productions behind him. And the film was written by Stuart Brennan as well. And the writing is, is pretty good for the most part in this film. I'll say, uh, I thought... Brennan's performance was very, very good. I can totally believe that he was uh, an actor who won a BAFTA. There's some times when he, uh, he's a little bit, I feel like, uh, this is a writing criticism for, for, for Stuart Brennan. I feel like, man, you, 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 you had a great script that you wrote and a great, a great ideas for how to adapt this. I think you should have just left Charles Dickens's dialogue completely out of it because the parts where I don't believe it are when he's trying to work in this obviously 1800s dialogue into a modern setting and it just doesn't work. Nobody would go, bah, humbug. It just it, Nobody does that in the modern world. I also think um, there's some times where like, he just comes across as not the way Scrooge speaks the rest of the time. So, like, there's a point where he says the line about, uh, oh, it's a pitiful excuse to pick a man's pocket every 25th of December, and Scrooge does not talk like that the rest of this production. I also think the names should have been changed. Bell is changed inexplicably to Nell, yet they keep names like Marley, Fred, uh, well, for Fred's fine, but, but Ebenezer, he shouldn't have changed his name. I could have believed it. You could have named him anything else. Call him Benedict Scrooge. Anything else. Just nobody gets named Ebenezer in this day and time. I, you know, I've, I lived in England for a while. Never met anybody with such an old English name. Uh, except one time, but that's a, that's a whole other story. But his name wasn't Ebenezer. It was a different name. But anyway. Uh, so, so, yeah, it's just... You should have just let all of the dialogue go, because because when the film is doing its its own original thing is when it's its best. Uh, the Marley character has no chains. It's a metaphorical chain. He's he's like Scrooge. You know that I'm still chained by the things I did in life. That's fine. I I can get behind that. I also like uh, again more modernistic changes. Like uh, in this version, Tiny Tim is not the Cratchits. Son. In fact, Bob Cratchit is a woman. That's a, that's a small criticism, but I feel like changing Bob's name to Bobby or something just to make it a little more feminine would have made sense. I've never met any. I, I've met several Bobbies in my life, several women named Bobby, but I've never met one who went by Bob. So it just seemed very. 
it didn't fit. Uh, it just didn't fit her, I didn't think. But anyway, uh, one of the adaptations that they make is Tim is her husband, and her husband is dying of cancer. His name is still Tim, but he is dying of cancer, and it's her husband. Scrooge, in this version, his parents died when he was 14, and he went to live with his uncle Fred. So instead of him being the uncle and his Fred, his nephew, his Fred being his nephew, his, his nephew being Fred, it's inverted in this production. So now he's not shunning the only member of his family who is sort of a, a son-like relationship. In this, it's actually sort of a fatherly relationship. Maybe he resents the fact that, that he felt like his uncle was replacing his father. It's not really explored in depth, but you could definitely read into it, and I did appreciate the uh, the changes actually added a lot to the story. It, it kept me kind of guessing, you know, okay, you're doing some interesting, different, weird stuff with it. That's cool. I'd, I'd like that. There's a, oh, like 200 versions of A Christmas Carol. Give me something different. That was, that was welcome. Bonnie Wright, who played Jenny Weasley, is in this film. Uh, I did originally check it out because she was in it. No, I don't have a thing for redheads. Just because, like, half the girls I've ever dated have been redhead, and my wife is a redhead, and, you know, maybe I have a thing for redheads, come to think of it. <laughs> but she's good in this. I, She gets, like, second to top billing, okay? It makes you think she's going to be a really big character. She just plays Belle, or Nell. She's in two scenes in the movie, and isn't really ever referenced again. That felt a little bit wrong. I mean, like, I understand, like, out of the other actors, you know, you, Stuart Brennan and Bonnie Wright are the two biggest names, but it felt like you were kind of drawing some Harry Potter fans in there just to see her, like, the promise of her being in it, and she's barely in it. So, I'm not going to say they purposely were manipulating the audience by doing that, but when you see the cast list... Most Americans are going to know Bonnie Wright and not Stuart Brennan. So I feel like most Americans, anyway, who watch this, they're watching it to see Jenny Weasley. Christmas past. The decoration for her is very cool. She almost has like a showgirl look to her. And I think it's an independent film. So I think I see the seams a little bit more because I am a filmmaker myself. And I make independent films <laughs> exclusively because I don't have a studio contract. Uh, I, I noticed some things like The Ghost of Christmas Past just stops appearing and you hear her voice and Scrooge is like, where are you? And she's like, I'm the past. I am everywhere. And you can kind of tell that scheduling conflicts meant that woman could not be there for every day of filming. So they just dubbed her voice in. That being said, the way that they use that as an excuse to centrally frame in on Scrooge is really good. I also liked the Ghost of Christmas Present. Sorry, the Goose of Christmas Present. I feel like that joke could have worked. It really didn't. <laughs> uh, also, he does a, a goose step dance and Scrooge does at the end. Both times, it's like 10 seconds. It's nothing. And at the end credits, there's somebody listed as the Goose Step Coordinator. That's completely unimportant. I just thought the whole world needed to know that somebody got that credit at the end of a movie. I was really happy. Then, of course, we have The Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come, and I've gone on record many times as saying, I think it's amazing that the ghost of Christmas yet to come should be the simplest ghost to get right. And so few versions get him right. I think it's because a lot of people think simplicity and think, oh, it'll be easy. And simple doesn't necessarily mean easy. And so few versions get this ghost right. And this version, he is not even present. Scrooge is speaking to him off camera the entire time. And... Listen, I cut independent films more slack because I make them. But because I make them, I also realize why certain things happen the way they do. And I really don't think The Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come was meant to be an off-screen presence. I think they filmed Scrooge's side of it and told him, yeah, we'll, we'll put in a great special effect later so that the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come looks really cool and we'll put it in the reverse shot. And I think they ran out of budget. 
and just couldn't afford to put the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come in there. I say that because something happens later where the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come starts speaking. And it's just so obvious that they're trying to bridge the gaps where Stuart Brennan is being instructed by the director to look off camera and, and oh yeah, and then the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come will do this. And the ghost never appears. A very classically indie thing in this movie that I really liked is that the whole movie has this blue filter. And when Scrooge wakes up on Christmas morning and he's been redeemed, the film suddenly goes into a bright orange color correction. So the whole film becomes this bright, warm, cheery feeling, and the whole rest of the film had this very gloomy look. That was awesome. But if you were going to do that, okay, if you're going to do that, the opening credits should not have been so damn cheery. <laughs> the opening credits look like it's the opening to a rom-com, okay? I, I could not believe when we exited the opening and went to this dark blue gloomy atmosphere for the whole film. It just seemed very out of nowhere. The film also relies way too heavily on aerial shots. Uh, of Scrooge driving from place to place, and and it just feels like they're padding it out to an hour and a half runtime. That should have just been cut out, and the film be made five minutes shorter, because it gets boring uh, when you're just watching him drive from place to place, and it's not big character moments. In fact, the ending I think would have stood stronger as well. If so, so here's how the scene is edited. Uh, we see Scrooge is going to Uncle Fred's with his girlfriend who is kind of helping him reconnect with her after uh, the death of Nell. And they drive and they drive and they drive. There's some great footage with the, the Cratchit family. It cu cuts back to them driving. And then they pull over the car and stop and Nell gives him a Christmas present. And then there's another like 30 seconds of them driving. There's just too much of that. When, when they get in the car the first time, should have been when she gave him the gift. And then we cut to the Cratchits, and maybe we can have that 30 seconds of them driving to Uncle Fred's house as the, the end of the film like it was. But it just felt like there was a little too much padding in there. Overall, though, the acting, while not bad, has an old quality to it. If you like old school acting, and I do, uh, you like Jimmy Stewart, Jimmy Cagney, uh, you like uh, Cary Grant, and, and that, that bigger, Spencer Tracy, you like that sort of bigger style of acting, you're going to like Stuart Brennan's performance in this. If that sort of thing annoys you, you're probably going to find him a little bit annoying. Overall, the scripting of the film is very good. It does some new and different things that I really liked seeing. However, it does have its flaws in places that do prevent it from fully becoming its own thing whenever it decides to cling too closely to the novel. And again, it does have moments that drag, like when Scrooge is you know, walking around with a sword to defend his house. So take all of that with a grain of salt. With, with all of this said, I hope you will go and watch it. It's free. It's on Pluto. I think it's also on Tubi. Uh, I, would, I would recommend you go and watch it anyway because... These independent films, their flaws normally are part of their charm. These flaws are not things that usually could have been prevented, except, for, again, for the padding thing, but that's probably more likely an experience from the director. Uh, we have to support these indie films, okay? Because Hollywood is crap right now, and you need to go and give them your money, give them your views, so that they know that we want to see more from people who are doing this as for passion rather than doing it strictly for money. So, take my criticisms, you know, whether or not those would affect you, but still go and watch this movie. As an indie film, I'm not going to grade it, but I will just say I liked it. I really enjoyed the experience I had watching it, and I will watch it again. I just will probably fast forward through some of the, the aerial photography <laughs> moments. Going into the season of Thanksgiving and Christmas, I wanted to just go ahead and get started with Christmas Carol stuff and, and Christmas movies because uh, I've missed it. I've missed it. And the last couple of years, I have been sick so much. Uh, I just, 
to quote the old song, I need a little Christmas <laughs> to make me feel better. Uh, it's been a hard year. Some good stuff has happened to me. I got married this year. Uh, and uh, I, hey, actually, I haven't said this in a video yet. So now's the time. I'm expecting my first child. So, so there you go. Uh, good stuff has happened, but it's been a very hard year for me. So I just, I just wanted to get into some Christmas stuff. I'm just ready for it, man. So with all that said, uh, yeah, please go check this film out. These are indie filmmakers. They probably made this film for less than a Hollywood film spends on their catering table for a couple days, okay? Give them your support. They really deserve it. They, they did all of this as, as a labor of love, and it shows. And I will definitely watch this film again. Uh, and I hope that, that you will watch it at least once uh, and enjoy a very different take on A Christmas Carol. Thank you for watching, everybody. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next one.